Right, well, moving on here, a shutdown of the federal government was narrowly avoided this weekend, but the U.S. Farm Bill has expired. So what does that mean for producers? So we wanted to find out more. Joining us now is Brad Lubin, Agricultural Economics Professor at the University of Nebraska-Lincoln. Thanks for being here today, Brad. Good morning. Thank you. Good you morning. bet. So what does this mean for Nebraska farmers in the short term and then maybe in the long term? Yeah. In the short term, it doesn't mean things stop overnight. We did avoid a government shutdown, so we at least don't have the government shutting down at least for another 45 days of discussion. But the Farm Bill, while it expired on October 1st, uh, still has programs, think safety net programs for producers, commodity programs and crop insurance programs. Those continue intact for now. So it's not an immediate uh, concern there. Uh, food assistance is also the biggest part of the Farm Bill. That continues intact for now. Uh, there are some smaller programs in the research title, the trade title, the rural development title that have some limitations. They can't issue some new funds and some new resources, but, uh, but we have a little bit of lead time here to try and make something happen. Okay. Can you give us an idea of how unusual this is? I mean, does this seem to happen when the farm bill yeah. comes around? Uh, surprisingly, it should be very unusual, but surprisingly it's not. Uh -huh, <laughs> we, uh -huh. we missed this uh, October 1st deadline with uh, seeming increasing regularity. Yeah. And it really sort of says there's really an end of year deadline to get things done, at least farm program wise, because if we don't officially get something done before January 1st, we revert to something we call permanent legislation, which dates to 1949. Okay. We don't know how to implement it. It'd be really difficult. It'd be economically painful, but it's always there because that's the last farm bill that didn't technically expire. Every recent, every modern farm bill has an expiration date, and unless it specifically gets reauthorized or, or extended, we have to think about old legislation that we don't know how to run. Wow. So there really is a cliff at the end of the year. That's what we'll have to avoid. Uh -huh, uh -huh. So where do we go from now? How do we get the ball rolling mm -hmm. on this new farm bill? One would say, well, the government's back open for business. We can continue discussions, but they also have a new 45-day period to try and solve appropriations. So most have assumed that the Farm Bill doesn't get discussed until we solve appropriations. And that probably suggests that it's even further and further before we have a real discussion. That leans more and more toward we'll have to get something done close to the end of the year. That something looks increasingly like let's just keep current policy in place for a year or more and try it again. Hmm. What would be the biggest problem if the Farm Bill did not get done at mm -hmm. the end of the year? What would be the first thing that yeah. would be a big issue for farmers and producers? Well, we call it a milk cliff or a dairy cliff because dairy policy would be the first thing affected by uh, no new Farm Bill and a return to permanent legislation. Okay. Milk is the first crop harvested in the new year on January 1st. And that old permanent legislation has support prices that are so far out of line with market conditions that, uh, um, that it's simply not an economic choice. Hmm. Um, Interesting. So, so that's the first That'd be challenge. the first thing, okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, well Brad, thank you for being here. Thank you both. Thanks yeah. for giving us an update on what's going on.